S several supporting programs in Afghanistan have been temporarily stopped owing a lack of female staff at a time when more than 28 million people in, the, the, in Afghanistan need assistance to survive uh, the uh, brutal winter economic clubs and others. Now, the Taliban on the December 24 banned all local and foreign non-governmental organizations from employing Afghan women. The order came from the Taliban's economy minister, who said any NGO uh, not complying with the audit or the ADIC will have its license revoked. Let's have more details of that in the support by Maria Macham. The Taliban rulers recently ordered international national non-governmental organizations to suspend Afghan female staff for allegedly not observing Islamic hijab and breaching mandatory gender segregation at work. The ban has prompted the United Nations to temporarily halt some time critical programs and several of the largest foreign NGOs in Afghanistan have also suspended their operations, observing that they cannot reach the millions of children, women and men in need of assistance without female staff. According to the UN resident and humanitarian coordinator, more than 28 million people in Afghan need aid. In a recent media update, the United Nations resident and humanitarian coordinator for Afghanistan, Remis, said that women's issues should be handled by their fellow women who need each other to convey their needs. When, for instance, a team is going to do an assessment for the needs in a village, it needs to include both men and women because there are men and women in the society. And as uh, we approach a conservative society, religious society, you obviously need m women to speak to the women to understand what are their particular needs, be it related to nutrition, be it related to health services, uh, water and sanitation or hygiene. So then uh, women are not able to participate in such an assessment. You cannot then uh, conclude a comprehensive program and then your ability to launch a new program is significantly handicapped. Ramis also indicates that it is not possible to deliver a comprehensive humanitarian action without the participation of women. The humanitarian needs of the people are absolutely enormous and it's important that we continue uh, to stay and deliver. As we do so, it's equally important uh, that the rights of women and girls, uh, of which we are so much talking these days, are absolutely preserved and protected and uh, uh, they are um, an important element, uh, undeniable element of the humanitarian action. Uh, we do not believe that it is possible to deliver uh, a comprehensive humanitarian action without participation of women, and uh, that's why it's, uh, the statement was issued. That's why we are uh, actively working uh, with uh, interlocutors on the ground to find solution to this current situation, and uh, that we are engaging with the authorities. Commenting on the Taliban leadership, Mr. Ramis noted the best way of coming to the solution is not pressure, but dialogue. The best way of coming to the solution is not a pressure, it is a dialogue. This movement have not responded well to the pressure in the past, and uh, this is from uh, what the experiences I have. I also must say that in, in several instances when we had negotiations, we were able to make progress. So what I will be focusing on and what my team will be focusing on is on dialogue and on getting this issue resolved. And that is my priority. The international community has not yet formally recognized the Taliban administration, mainly over human rights concerns and the treatment of women. The latest directive also risks pushing more families to flee across the borders as refugees. Reports indicate that women NGO workers across Afghanistan's 34 provinces have been at the forefront of efforts to find solutions for Afghans affected by four decades of conflict and persecution, including millions of refugees and internally displaced people. Reporting for iAfrica News, I am Maria Macham.